said pre-match you were looking forward to batting with uh, Steve. What was it like for the for the first time? Uh, it was good fun. Um, obviously, it was um, good to sort of spend some time and. Obviously, I've never batted with him before, so it was um, you know, a good experience to sort of see how he goes about it and obviously learn from him out there. And can you just talk us through, I suppose, that second session in particular with the wind, sort of bales coming off, the, the chip packets and a bit of chat, was it kind of getting quite tense out there? Oh, look, it was probably frustrating for everyone because um, the one I pulled away, I thought the bales fell off, so I looked back and the bales were still on and then I had to pull away and then the chip packets kept coming past and the beach ball and so no um yeah I mean it was it was probably just frustrating for the game in general probably them they're just getting frustrated because we have to pull away because there's stuff there and then obviously the bales were um like you, when they put the bales on you could just see the stumps shake and it was just a matter of time before they came off so um no look it was, it was very windy out there I've never played a game where there's um you've played with no bales um so that was uh, very different um but no all in all look it was pretty Tough conditions um, for bowling out there. Uh, Manas, yesterday the nets after Steve Smith was done with his own thing, he was like chucking balls at you for a long time. Does it feel like you've found a soulmate in this team? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, look, I, I did think a little bit. It was a bit surreal, really. I had Steve Smith throwing sidearms to me for 30 minutes. Um, yeah, so, no, look, it, it is great. Like I said, I love um, talking... Tim about the game and learning off him, obviously a great experience and a great player. So, um, no, look, I'm just you know, taking it all in uh, as much as I can. Sam? Uh, Manus, fourth Ashes 50 in a row out of the four. Is this the, the best one? Is this the, the best you've batted? Um, I don't know. Um, probably probably the first innings at um, Leeds was, was probably, I felt, I felt the best. Um, today, obviously, just the sea, the conditions, the wind and stuff, it was it was just tough to get used to and, and kind of get consistent with your movements because it was so windy and there was so many distractions um, sort of around the ground. So, no, look, it, I mean, it doesn't really matter how you get the runs. It's just it's just about the score. And um, I think, you know, it was it was important for us to make sure we dig in and, and get a big first inning score because um, obviously the, you guys would have seen there's some spin out there. Um, so, you know, it's really good for us. Malice, were you surprised with um, how Joffre bowled? His pace seemed quite a bit down compared to last games. Um, no, look, obviously, you know, he's got great skill. Um, he can swing the ball. Um, so, you know, he was just obviously trying to do a bit more of that today. Um, you know, we know that he's got that extra effort ball and that extra heaviness in him. Um, but, yeah, obviously, um, you know, today's, like I said, conditions... Um, it was almost like they were running into the wind from both ends today, so um, it was quite tough. I, I mean, I can only assume as a quick bowler it would be quite tough to get um, rhythm in when it's so windy and so the wind's so inconsistent. Does a day like today sort of prove that the idea of momentum in a series is, is a load of nonsense? Um, I, I, think, I think it's pretty much if you allow it. I, I think... You know, we've talked about that not being an issue for us at all. We're just focused on the process of winning a test match, um, not necessarily, you know, the overall. It's just, you know, taking it a ball at a time, a day at a time, and trying to make sure we're doing things right. And I think that's what we've been doing the whole series. We haven't been getting too far ahead when we've been doing well, and we haven't been getting too far um, down when we've been doing poorly. So we, we've just been quite consistent, and I think... You know that that that's probably the key um, to to not let momentum take take its course. Considering everything that's played out today, losing two early wickets, the amount of disruptions, the time overs lost, what's the chat in the room about where you play stuff to the end of day one? We haven't actually talked. Uh, we haven't actually talked, so it's been quite a quick changeover. Because, um, but. You Personally, I look, I think it's been a pretty good day for us. I think um, it, it was tough conditions probably for everything and to, to get probably momentum with the bat and the ball. So um, obviously losing three wickets was a three for 150. Is that the score? I don't know. 170. Um, yeah, it's been a good day. Obviously, we, we wanted to keep, um, you know, just making sure we just be real disciplined and make sure that, you know, when it did feel like it was getting easier to bat, we just make sure we're staying more on and aware in the game because it can turn very quickly out there, as you saw 
uh, Overton Bowl, quite a nice spell. Daniel Bernard. Uh, Marcus, have you been, um, in terms of your conversations with, with Steve, and I suppose how that's evolved over the, over the tour, was it, um, have you taken much out of those conversations, and I suppose getting to know him closely, actually in the innings that you're, that you're playing, and even you know, now one that you've actually played with him? Yeah, definitely. I, I think we, you know, we're constantly talking out there as well about, um, you know, what the bowl is trying to do and what what he's trying to do. And then I'm sort of, you know, we, we're, we're thinking similar and trying to think about, you know, where they're trying to get us out and and stuff like that. So it's um, no always trying to learn off off everyone really. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a batter or bowler. Just trying to learn different things off different people and just trying to make sure you're always open to, you know, learning off anyone. Thing that's often said about Steve is him being a great problem solver against individual bowlers and fields and, and whatnot. Is that the sort of thing that you try to, I suppose, glean off him? How you go about doing that? Definitely, definitely. I think that's one thing he's he's very good at, and you can see that. I saw I see that at the other end, but I think you can see it as a spectator. Is um, you know when different guys comes on, how he changes, you know, different guards, the way he bats, different pre movements, and I think that's. That's what makes him the best in the world, um, that he's always kind of one step ahead and, and thinking ahead um, and not wait, not being reactive. He's being proactive, um, which, which makes him very hard to bowl to because he's always thinking ahead. Last one, David. As you said, uh, Craig Overton bowled a pretty decent spell just leading up to your, to your wicket. Was that the in Ducker that you didn't quite spot? Was that one for the bowler? Definitely, yeah. It, it was a nice ball, obviously. Um, you know, it, it hit the seam and kind of just kept going with the seam. It, it was a nice ball, obviously. He was swinging the ball away most of the time, and I think he bowled a few that kind of angled in and, and hit the seam. So, no, it, it was a good piece of bowling, but I need to make sure that I'm, I'm ready and, and I'm able to keep those out.